there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna share my very first pocket letter with you. Now, if you don't know what pocket letters are, they're super fun. Basically, the idea is you take a baseball card holder and you fill it full of lots of goodies and fun little cards and maybe little supplies and you ship it off to a girlfriend. You can fold it into thirds and mail it in a regular envelope. Well, mine's really thick, so it probably won't go in a regular envelope, but it's just a great way to share and show somebody that you're thinking of them. I'm using products by ScorePal today, these new Score Die bundles. I'm gonna show you how to use them and um, you can use them for things other than pocket letters too, but these are just super fun and I can't wait to share them with you. Let's take a look at the Pocket Pen Pal dies from ScorePal. That little envelope comes in the Mega Bundle, and I'll talk about that in a second. But each of these little bundles are $15.99, and they contain two to three dies, um, depending on the size of the dies. They cut really well, and I think they'd be useful for a lot of other things other than just these pocket letters. And that little square envelope comes in the bundle that's on sale for $40.77, and I'll have a coupon code in the video description so you can save an additional 10% on your order. I went ahead and chose some pattern papers and cardstock. I thought I'd like to use. Now the thing is, I honestly, after doing this, recommend using scraps because you're not gonna use that much paper. Just creating on these small little ATC sized um, cards, it really doesn't give you that much room to use a lot of paper. So next time I would definitely use my scraps. These dies will work in all of your die cutting machines. I'm using my Big Shot because that's my favorite machine and the one that I own. Um, I decided to experiment with a couple of platforms. Now here I'm using the magnetic platform and personally I found that to be a little too tight of a fit. So then I decided to use my multi-purpose platform after that just because I felt like I really had to, to push to get it through the, um, the Big Shot. You can see there that I got really crisp scoring lines so it's really easy to fold these uh, little envelopes right out of the machine. You don't need to do any additional scoring unless Unless you want to try to cut two or three cards at the same time, then you'll need to you'll need to score the ones that weren't right in contact with the die. But they work super beautiful. They cut great, and um, and they're just wonderful. When you're using the more intricate dies, though, you are going to need to take a little more care. In fact, here's something I don't recommend doing. Here I put three dies onto one platform, and what happens when you put too many dies in your machine at once is that the pressure does not push equally all over. Um, my machine is older, so I'm gonna have much more pressure on the edges of my my platform then right there in the center. So I'm gonna have to rock it back a couple times and possibly even take the dies out, flip them over and cut them individually just to make sure I get enough pressure on those intricate pieces. So you can see that the uh, the holes in the middle cut out, cut out really well and I could separate it from the side, but as far as getting those little detailed out of details out of the little kind of like eyelet lace edging, I'm gonna need to go through another time to get that to cut properly. So I could have just saved the time to begin with by cutting it on its own. Now on these intricate pieces, you can see that that second time was a charm. Um, you're gonna need to poke out those little holes and a lot of times you can just kind of tap them and they'll pop out or you could use the tool in one which ScorePal does sell on their site but I don't have it. So I just use like a needle tool to poke out any little um, spots that remained in my design. And since a lot of these pretty envelopes and cards have the little eyelet lace on the edge, I would definitely invest in that little um, tool in one so that you can make your job a lot easier. I cut all the dies in the set, they all cut beautifully, and I was really pleased with the outcome. Now let's start crafting our pocket letter. Quick tip, if you decide you want to cut multiples at one time, which I recommend with the smooth edge dies only, the only drawback is that on the envelopes, the score lines will not show up on the um, extra copies of the cut you're making. So if you're gonna do that, simply use a tool like the score pal to score those envelope folds so that you can fold them neatly. This is the brand new version of the score pal with eighth inch increments. It's super fun and they even have a little tool to make envelopes with, which uh, is just wonderful. I've had my old score pal for about six years and I absolutely adore it so I was super excited to get the new upgrade. Another quick tip, whenever you're folding these scored cards, you want the crease on the outside. That'll give you a nice neat look on the outside of your envelope. Now all of these envelope dies do have score lines right on the die so it really makes the work of making these little pocket envelopes a piece of cake. Now I've never made one of these before, so I like to lay out all my supplies and get an idea of what I have to work with. Now the collection of scrapbook papers that I'm using came with a sheet of embellishments to cut apart, so I decided that would be a great way to start since a lot of these tags and little labels are just the right size for my pocket letters. The paper's by Crate Paper, by the way. And all I did was simply trim out all the little labels and set them aside for later. I have an impressive stash of supplies and I often buy in bulk, so of course I had plenty of things I could share in this pocket letter. So I decided I would stay in the same color theme of brown, pink, and mint green, and I started to wind some of my fibers onto this cute little bobbin die cut. 
And now I simply just slide it into one of the divided pockets. Now I can move that around later after I have filled up more cards and decide what I wanted to do, but for now it can stay safe right in there. Next, I wanted to fill the button and the Brad card, since that's another embellishment I have quite a bit of. In fact, I think you could actually make your very own really cool storage solutions out of these dies. It would be a great way to get your um, craft room looking really sharp and organized. But I thought for right now, I would um, put some of the Brads in the Brad card and then wire some of the buttons onto the button card. And I just used little bits of craft wire to wire on the buttons so that they would stay in place and I wouldn't have to tie string. Next, I wanted to put some of the stick pins I had into the pin card. I couldn't use them horizontally because the pins were too short, so I just flipped them vertically and um, weaved them into the holes underneath and it worked just fine. I thought it'd be fun to have a little place for a secret note, so I took one of the little um, stripey label pieces that I had cut out of that uh, big sheet of the pattern paper, and I'm using a little score tape to adhere it into the inside of the envelope. And that looks really cute as is. I did use my scalloped edge scissors to trim off one edge so it matched, and then I just folded it around the edges. To decorate the outside of the envelope, I took one of the little labels that was on the um, pattern paper sheet and just glued that to the top with some more score tape. If you want to share something like stickers or these sticky back bling gems that I have, simply trim them right off of their carrier sheet. Then apply a couple strips of score tape into one of the cute little cards that came in your die bundle and then just stick them right in there inside of a little card. And it's fun because that's going to keep the um, the pocket protector from, from grabbing any of those little gems off of their sticky backing, but it's also going to be a little surprise when they pull that little card out and see what you've put inside. To decorate that card, I cut out a cupcake from the pattern paper, added a little gem on top for a cherry, and then just slid it inside the pocket. I think it's so adorable! Now I must confess, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to put in this tiny cute little envelope, but I did stick it on top of one of the um, die cut cards, one of the plain ones that would be great if you like to make a lot of artist trading cards, and I'm just going to decorate that with a little bit of washi tape and slide that in a pocket as well. At first I was overwhelmed with all of these little pockets to decorate, but I will tell you, once you get going, it goes extremely fast. I thought it would be fun to share some of my washi tape, so I took three strips of my pattern paper and then I laminated it. And then I used a rounded rectangle die to cut a bunch of laminated cards out. Now I will tell you, you'll need to go through a couple times in your machine to get the cards to cut because the lamination's kind of thick. And I did find using my, ma my magnetic platform helped in this situation. Now I grabbed some washi tape that matched in that brown, mint, and pink family that I've been using all through this pocket letter and just decided to put three strips on each card. I like to put a few feet of each design on a card, and this is really great because washi tape can come in humongous rolls and you rarely ever use it all up. This way it can get used up before the stickiness wears away on it. I tried winding some crinkled seam binding around one of these same cards that I had used for the washi tape, but I found that it was too bulky and it wouldn't fit in my pockets afterwards. So you'll want to use the bobbin if you want to do ribbons or just kind of um, wrap it up into a little skein and shove it in a pocket and it will look cute either way. Tiny Ziploc jewelry bags are perfect for sharing items such as sequins or beads in your pocket letter. And you can slide them into any pocket that needs a little bit of sparkle. Now I wanted to talk about these page protectors. They are the um, sleeve set of five for five dollars from ScorePal. And the nice thing about these is that they have a divider in between the front and the back pocket. So the brads and the pins and the buttons, those wires in the back are not catching on the pockets from the front. As you can see, I decorated both sides and it's nice because you can easily remove or add into any pocket without getting hung up on the one in behind. This was such a fun project. Project. I am so glad that I got a chance to try it out and try these fun dies from our sponsor ScorePal. I'll have links in the video description as well as a 10% off coupon code so you can save some money on these wonderful products. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you've ever done a pocket letter before in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up and until next time, happy crafting!